Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Alpaca Elements Travel Backpack, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite one bag travel options. We've looked at some different gear from Alpaca on the channel in the past, like the Elements Daily Backpack, as well as some other tech organizers. We're going to be featuring a few more of those in an upcoming video. I saw the Kickstarter for this a while back and was really intrigued with the feature set and you know just the general aesthetic so excited to have a chance to check this out over the past couple of weeks in this video i'm going to be talking about my experience testing this i'll show you how i've loaded it out walk through all the features and i'll also talk about how it compares to some of the other similar bags that are currently on the market before jumping into the video if you're new here welcome my name is danny and on this channel we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear if you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot so with all that being said let's go ahead and jump in Starting off with the outside of the bag, I really like the overall aesthetic. It definitely has a pretty modern, sleek, and techy look that reminds me of some of Alpaca's other products, particularly the Elements backpack. This looks like a larger version of that bag, so similar design language, fairly subdued. There are some attachment points along the exterior, so you do have some functionality, but it's not overwhelming. And I think it's a look that's gonna work well for any type of travel that you're doing, whether you know it's for work or just for exploring a city, potentially even going into the outdoors. As far as the materials, the bag feels very solidly built. It's offered in an 840D ballistic nylon. And then the version that I have here is a VX42 X-Pack fabric, which I'm a big fan of. It feels like it's gonna offer plenty of durability and abrasion resistance, and it also provides lots of weather resistance. It really feels like your stuff is gonna be well protected from the elements. The X-Pack fabric also gives you a little bit of weight savings. So the bag comes in at about 3.5 pounds, which isn't super lightweight, but it is lighter than some of the other similarly sized travel bags that are on the market. Beyond the exterior fabric, you also have some very well protected aqua guarded YKK zippers all throughout. Continuing along the outside of the bag, I was happy to see that you have an external water bottle pocket. This offers a decent amount of capacity, even when the bag is a little bit more packed out. Currently, I have here a 20 ounce water bottle. This is from Life Straw. It is a filtered water bottle that I've been testing out recently. It's also pretty lightweight, which is nice. And then this pocket has some elasticity, so it'll adapt to that larger water bottle. I think anything much bigger than the 20 ounces might start to get a little bit tight, especially with the main compartment full, uh, but it has a nice depth. And then I like that the elasticity pulls the pocket close to the bag when it's not in use. On the side, you also have some compression straps that you can adjust with these uh, nice G hooks that are here. So you can attach a tripod or something a little bit taller that doesn't fit inside of the bag or that you can pair with the water bottle pocket. And then you have really nice handle at the top. It's got kind of a seat belt like material, which is comfortable to hold. You have one on the side as well. If you want to carry this like a briefcase when you're not wearing it on your back. And you also have some compression straps on the bottom that are going to be great for holding a tripod or a yoga mat or a jacket, something that doesn't fit on the inside of the bag. I like that these are included with the bag and that they also have these easy to remove buckles. So whatever you're getting in and out of the bag, you can do it quickly. And they're actually fully removable if you don't think that you're gonna use them or you just wanna have a cleaner overall look for your bag. As far as the capacity, the bag comes in at about 35 liters, which is kind of my ideal one bag travel size as it gives me enough space to hold the items that I would typically need for a week or more of travel while not being so big that it's gonna be difficult to carry on to a variety of domestic and international airlines. So plenty of space and I like that even when the bag is a little bit more packed out, it never looks super big. It manages to maintain a pretty sleek silhouette which made it great for navigating credit areas and jumping onto public transit. Taking a look at the harness system, so far the bag has been really comfortable to wear. I like how the straps have been implemented here. They have plenty of padding. It's really soft and comfortable right out of the box. On the inside, it's got this really interesting sort of ridged pattern, which helps provide some breathability. This padding here is really soft. It's not as breathable as maybe an air mesh would be, but it's done a pretty good job of managing the moisture that might be building up on my shoulders. And the straps also have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's more packed out. At the top, you have load lifters that are gonna allow you to really pull the back close to your back and tweak how it sits on your shoulders. And then you have an adjustable and removable sternum strap with a magnetic buckle to help distribute the weight. Moving into the back paneling, this has also been really comfortable. The padding that's included here feels great. It's very breathable. It's got more of an air mesh 
on it, which I would have liked to have seen on the straps. And it's well distributed all throughout the back and you have some nice air channels that are gonna provide you with ventilation and airflow while you're walking around throughout the day. On the back panel, you also have a nice luggage pass-through that's gonna allow you to rest this on a suitcase while traveling to save some weight on your back. And then at the bottom, you have a couple of attachment points that you can pair with a waist belt that is sold separately. You know, that might be a nice thing to have as this is a pretty large bag. It might be able to get pretty heavy for me for this size, though I typically end to just leave that off. So I really like that it's fully removable. Jumping into the organizational options, the bag has a nice variety of pockets all throughout. Starting off at the front, you have a pretty simple quick access pocket, very similar to the one that's on Alpaca's Element Tech backpack. So it's got this flap that comes over the zipper to give it a little bit more protection. It can be a little inconvenient to get in and out because of this flap, but you know I think it also matches the look of the bag and it is nice that it gives you some extra protection from the elements. And so not a ton of space here. This is definitely gonna be for smaller items that you need to get to easily. It doesn't have a lot of give either. So this is where I currently have my Apple AirPods and then I also have a lightning cable to charge my phone. On the side of the bag that doesn't have the water bottle pocket, you have another quick access zippered area, well protected zipper and this opens up pretty wide. On the inside you have some internal organization, a couple of slip pockets that might be good for EDC type of accessories if you're carrying a flashlight or maybe a larger pen. And then on the back you have a deeper slip pocket that might be good for a portable battery or some documentation, maybe a wallet. And on the inside of the flap, there is another larger zipper compartment, which seems like it's meant to be for sunglasses. That's actually what I used it for, for my sunglasses with their case. It was able to fit in there. However, it did take up most of the space, which is why I didn't end up using the slip pockets on the other side. Next up, there is a larger admin compartment with some good internal organization. I like that all of the main compartments of the bag do have that ability to lock. So I currently have a cable lock here that's just gonna give you a little more peace of mind while you're traveling. So opening this up, it doesn't go all the way down as far as the zippers. The compartment, however, does go pretty much to the bottom of the bag. So you have some good depth there. If you wanna you know, place maybe some pouches, or hats, some gloves, anything that you're grabbing a little bit more regularly. It's a bit of a tight fit if you pack out the main compartment, but I like that you do have that space down there. And then inside you have organization on both the flap and the back of the compartment. So starting off here on the back, you have a couple of slip pockets that don't really have a ton of elasticity, but still enough space for the types of items that I would hold in here. So I have a deck of playing cards, and then you have a few slots for pen or a stylus. And then I also have my Apple Magic Mouse on the other side. Behind that, you have simple zippered compartment that goes about the length of my finger. So another good spot to hold smaller accessories, keys, maybe some wired headphones. And then on the flap, you have some webbing that's gonna pair with Alpaca's ecosystem of accessories. They have some clips that you can pair with this sort of webbing that you can you know, use to hold their keychains, some of their pouches. So you can take a look at their site to see all the different things that can combine here. Other than that, it's just a good place to attach uh, anything that has a clip. So flashlights, EDC tools that are TSA safe. You can clip things on with a carabiner. And then behind that, you have a zipper compartment that actually has a pretty good amount of volume. So currently what I have here is the anchor wall charger that I have for my laptop, my phone, my tablet, it can charge all those devices. I have my portable hard drive in there. And there's also this little hidden slot that's gonna be great for an AirTag or other similar type of tracker. And then above that, you have one more mesh zippered pocket, not a huge compartment by any means, it does have this nice sort of uh, durable feeling mesh. You can see on the inside at the moment, the only thing that I have in here is a portable battery to charge my phone. The next area that we're gonna be taking a look at is the laptop compartment. I like that this is separate from the main area. Another well-protected zipper. This one goes down a little bit further, but it is not a flat opening compartment, which I think makes sense. I never really use that functionality too much, so it's still easy to reach down, grab your device while you're going through security or if you, know, you happen to be working with this bag. And on the inside, you have dedicated slots for a tablet and a laptop, which is great to see. Both sleeves have a nice soft fleece lining on the inside. So starting off with the tablet sleeve, this isn't as thick as the laptop one, but it does have 
a little bit of protection. This is gonna be able to hold a 10 or 11 inch tablet. Currently what I have in here is my iPad mini with a case and it was able to fit in there. And then behind that you have the actual laptop sleeve. This one's a little thicker. Again, that soft lining on both sides and it does feel like this is pulled up off the bottom of the ground. So if you happen to place your bag down a little bit harder, your device is gonna be protected. This is gonna be able to hold up to a 15 or 16 inch laptop comfortably. Currently what I have in here is a 13 inch MacBook Air. You can see there's plenty of leftover space here at the top. So pulling my device out. Now the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. It does come up a decent amount. So if you have a thicker device, you should be able to squeeze it in there. But if you pack out the rest of the bag and you're putting a tablet in this area, it could start to get a little bit tight. I'd be worried about some potential damage to the screen. So you just have to kind of keep that in mind with how you're organizing. But with the amount of padding, the fleece lining, and the fact that this is suspended, it really feels like my devices are gonna be well protected while I'm on the go. And then the last area we're gonna be taking a look at is the main compartment. This has a pretty much full clamshell style opening. Forgot to call out earlier these Hypalon zipper pulls, which feel really nice. They give you a good tactile feel to make it very easy to get into the bag. And then full visibility into everything that you might be packing out. I'm always a big fan of this, particularly for travel backpacks. Very simple layout in this main compartment that's perfect for use with packing cubes. Alpaca has its own set of packing cubes within their ecosystem. Currently I have the same setup that I typically use so that you can compare it across my other bags. And so diving right in at the top, I have the smaller peak design compressible packing cube with t-shirts, underwear, socks, and things like that. I have an additional pair of shoes here at the top, my air dop kit. And then I also have the larger compressible peak design packing cube with my pants and shirts and other large clothing items. All of that fit in there comfortably. I was impressed. I was actually able to fit both Peak Design packing cubes. And now with this main area empty, you can get a better look at the inside. You can see the bright orange lining. It's got this honeycomb sort of pattern, which feels and looks nice, gives you some good visibility for what you're trying to find. On the inside of this compartment, you do have some extra organization on the sides. You have two zipper pockets on each side. I didn't really end up using these too much. This might be a good spot for smaller tech items, batteries, maybe some medicines, other small toiletry type things. I like that they stay out of the way if you don't wanna use them, but it's nice to have them. And then on the back of the compartment, you also have some additional webbing that you can use to clip on accessories, either from Alpaca's ecosystem or other sort of pouches and gear. If you have Molly compatible things, you can probably hook them on here pretty good. And then on the flap, you have some additional zipper pockets, smaller one on the bottom with that same mesh that we saw earlier. So it feels really durable. It doesn't have a ton of stretchiness, but there's still volume here. If you want to store, you know, documents, dongles, toiletries. I didn't put anything in here because I leave most of the volume for my packing cubes, but nice to have it. And then at the top flap, a larger zippered mesh pocket. Again, good amount of volume here. And in here I actually placed a little manicure set that I typically carry with me, as well as just some wipes that are good to have while you're on the road. And then again, as I said earlier with both of these, if you don't wanna use them, they stay out of the way. So just really love the layout and space in this main area and throughout the rest of the bag. Everything is very well thought out, feels super durable. And this has just been awesome to use as far as a travel backpack. I'm excited to put it through its paces on more trips and if you're looking for a stylish, versatile, and comfortable one bag travel option, this is gonna be a fantastic bag to check out. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the Alpaca LMS travel backpack over the past couple of weeks. I believe you can pre-order it on the company site. I'll include a link in the description below to the site and to the Kickstarter page, which has a lot more information on the whole travel ecosystem that they've developed. As far as the pricing, it's a little tricky to make out what the final price will be. They have a lot of different options. If you back the Kickstarter, there were some discounts and there's also price differences based on the fabric. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag this made me think of is the Air Travel Pack 3, which has been one of my favorites, if not my favorite travel bag for a while. Definitely kind of my go-to, the one that I you know use the most just because I'm so comfortable with the layout, the space that it offers. It comes in at 35 liters, so pretty similar in capacity to this has a great organizational layout, padded laptop sleeve, very comfortable harness system, rugged weather resistant materials. It's also offered in an X-Pack like this one. And yeah, it's just a fantastic option. It does feel maybe a little bit bulkier or heavier 
than the Elements backpack based off how you know I've loaded it out and used it during my testing. It does feel like this one just has a little bit more of a streamlined silhouette. Um, they can hold a similar amount. This one also doesn't have all the same organizational bells and whistles, but it does have an impressive layout. If, however, you're looking for something that's just gonna give you maybe a little bit more of a robust harness system, then that also might give you a smidge more space, and this is gonna be a reliable and awesome bag with a very modern look, and that's gonna be a fantastic option to check out. The next bag this made me think of is the Tortuga 40 liter travel bag, which is one of the newer bags that's currently on the market. Tortuga always has some of the most comfortable harness systems, particularly with how adjustable they are. You can really configure it to match your body type and height. And their newer bag has a very weather resistant exterior, well protected zippers. At 40 liters, it's gonna be a little bit bigger than this bag here. So if you, you know, need some additional capacity, that's a nice bonus. It still has a well padded laptop sleeve, maybe not as well padded as this one and some of the other options, but suspended, fleece lined, it has some good organization, not overwhelming. And again, the harness system is just so, so good on that bag, I could wear it all day. Loaded out, it also has a removable waist belt that is also well padded and is gonna help give you some additional support. So if you need extra space and you want a simple looking bag that is gonna offer a ton of weather resistance and comfort, then that's gonna be one of the best options to consider. Another bag this made me think of is the Evergood CTB35, which is a really great travel backpack. Like this one, it comes in at 35 liters. It's gonna look a little wider than this. This one might be deeper, whereas the CTB is wider, so it can look a little bit stranger on your back, at least that's how I felt, but still just a really great looking, minimal aesthetic, definitely has a much more subdued vibe. And one of the best pocketing layouts of any bag just has a nice variety of pockets, all with their own independent volume, very easy to use. It has a separate, suspended, and well-padded laptop sleeve, luggage pass-through. It has an integrated waist belt that you can hide away or pull out as needed. And, you know, it's just a really well-built bag. The 420D nylon that Evergoods uses on that bag gives you a nice amount of durability. It doesn't attract a ton of dust and hair. Still gonna offer some good weather resistance, YKK zippers, and just a really great all-purpose bag might be a really great one if you're somebody who's taking longer adventures into the outdoors. Evergoods bags are great kind of crossover packs. So if you're looking for something spacious that comes in at about this size, that's gonna give you great organization and comfort, then that's gonna be a fantastic option to take a look at. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the GORUCK GR2, which is another one of the travel bags that I have loved using over the past couple of years. There are a few different iterations of the GR2 now. There is you know, the 40 liter slick edition, there is the Heritage GR2s, there's a 26 liter, 34 liter, 40 liter, so lots of different options depending on what you're looking for. But the layout on the GR2 is one of the best in my opinion. It has two clamshell compartments, which gives you a lot of flexibility with how you can organize. It's got plenty of pocketing all throughout. GORUCKS bags are also really great as far as their harnesses, particularly if you're carrying heavier weight. It just never feels like those straps are gonna give out on you. Separate, well padded and suspended laptop compartment. And I really like the subdued look of those bags, especially if you're going with the Heritage or Slick Editions. They don't have any webbing per se, um, but then it's nice that if you do wanna have some flexibility as far as you know attaching pouches or accessories with carabiners, you can get some of the GR2s that have the Molly webbing on them. GORUCK has also recently released X-Pack editions of those bags. I don't know if they're gonna be in stock, as of the time of when this video gets released, but also just fantastic additions to check out. I've used the Kaiden edition of the GR2, which was X-Pack. Fantastic as far as saving you a little bit of weight, giving you some extra weather resistance, and so really great bag overall. And if you're looking for something that's gonna give you some flexibility with the organizational layout, excellent build quality, and you know a nice variety as far as the sizes and styles, then the GR2 is gonna be a great option to consider. With that being said, the Alpaca Elements Travel Backpack holds up really well against all those options and has quickly become one of my favorite one-bag travel solutions just due to the quality, the silhouette that it has, the space, and the organization. It's been great to use, and if you're looking for a reliable and versatile one-bag travel bag, then I definitely recommend you check this one out. And I'm curious to hear what you all think of the Elements Travel Backpack and how it compares to some of the other popular travel bags that are currently on the market. If there's any similar options that you think that I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. 
And I want to thank the company again for sending the bag for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one.